When searching through the horrors of old British telly, there's nothing more potent than a variety show. Well, maybe something more potent. A variety show hosted by Michael Barrymore. What? Michael Barrymore's Saturday Night Out ran for two series on BBC One over the summers of 1988 and 89, and we're watching the first. Ice creams. Barrymore heads who recognise the subtle musical motif on the soundtrack will know what's coming. In the ice cream bowl, there's a crab we know, and his name is Valentino. He really knows how to dance. Doing the crab was Michael's big novelty song of that year. A classic in the genre, the lyrics instruct how to do the titular dance. I guess with a loose theme of stuff what lives in water, its B side was a cover of the theme from Family Ness. But they open every episode with it, each leading in with a different crab skit. Oh, brilliant. Was I really that good? Not you, love. The crab. Look, I thought I told you. <laughs> oh, no, not you. <laughs> Look at Valentino, too much Pinot. Clearly the BBC really wanted a hit out of this, but it peaked in the charts at number 81. Hey, waiter. Yes, I know I am. Do you know where the toilets are? Yes, thank you. Beaten to veg of Valentino, he really knows how to dance. Everybody's doing the crab, so come on, let's go. You move to the right, then to the left, then you win. Turn around and sway back to back. Enough of this crab business. Basically, this whole series is one giant royal variety, if every other act was Michael Barrymore. And like a foul guff which signals impending diarrhoea, the very first guest is a warning for what's coming. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Keith Harris! <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Everybody happy? <sighs> Not anymore. If Barrymore was the anarchic comic he claimed, he'd yeet that duck into the audience. It's lovely to be back here in lovely Jersey, isn't it? I know! I know! I get excited, don't I? He does! I do, you know! He does! Another repeating yourself routine, is it? I don't like the monkey, do I? He doesn't like the monkey. I don't, you know. No. He's naughty. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. Good night, God bless. <laughs> There is an intriguing concept here for a ventriloquist, him and Cuddle switching bodies, but in practice... Three? I say. What do you want? <laughs> and I've got, I've got your voice! Yes, I know that, and I've got your voice, haven't I? Has Keith heard his own voice before? I think it rather suits you, actually. He thinks he's Roger Moore. And if you think we're escaping without a song, bad news, Winkle. Yeah, have a listen to this, folks. Okay. I've been everywhere, man. We've been everywhere, man. And the Lord don't care, man. We never pay our fair, man. <laughs> Still, at least he never. Jesus Christ! Some of this stuff's like the random nonsense you put into those AI art apps. Michael Barrymore on Strictly with Dot Cotton. 
June's favorite is the Latin American, but unfortunately, he's away on business. Michael Barrymore on Strictly with Doc Cotton and Star Wars. Mm. One thing to note is that every guest is played on and off to doing the crab. Have you any idea how many times I heard that melody while sitting through these? They should use it at the Oscars when people's speeches go on too long. Now, um, well, first of all, uh, I've got, got a lot of thank yous to do. I'd like to thank uh, my wife. Alright, there's a lot to get through. So let's break this down into the main food groups of light entertainment. Mike Osman! Cracking example of turning around before coming back as someone else. Only fools and Aussies! Now just get into character. All right, all right, look, Rodney, you palonka, right? You wally, Rodney, right? You dozy old twonk, Rodney. This is a low, a low. Good morning. Mike Osman went into the barbers with your old school photo. EastEnders. I don't want to talk about it. What do you want, Wilmot? Let's live it away. Oh, but I've got a headache, man. Enjoy the show. Good night. God bless you all. Thank you very much. In a bit of trivia, Osman once co-ran an erotic dancing club with anti-vax footballer Matt Letissier, as described in this newspaper article from 1999. Troubled Southampton night spot Celebration Plaza could be back in business by the autumn. Owners of the club, formerly leased by soccer ace Matt Letissier and comedian Mike Osman, hope to reopen at the end of the summer. The Terminus Terrace nightclub, described by Mr. Osman as an absolute nightmare from day one, introduced naked dancing girls last year in a bid to boost takings, but the plan backfired when erotic dancers performed lewd sex acts in front of undercover vice cops. You dozy old twonk, Rodney! <laughs> Mark Walker! With a literal hostess trolley of wigs, his line in impressionist ticks is spectacular. Could you imagine? Let's pop over now to see Clint Eastwood making his own Soviet version of a fist full of rubles. Hi, everybody. <laughs> My name's Clint Eastwood. All the way from England, it's the one and only Pross. It's me, Stavros, isn't it? The big yin in Jersey, right? You know, Billy Conley, the big yin, you know. I'd never suggest nepotism, but Mark's the son of Roy Walker off Catchphrase, and a couple of years after this display, he was hosting a quiz on ITV. As they say in Russia, Moscow, good night, thank you! From copycats and Davro on the box, it's Jessica Martin. Surprise, surprise! Woo! I'm all mixed up, oh Gladys, when am I gonna get me yellow coat? But the most unexpected impressionist is one Michael Barrymore. Here's his Larry Grayson. Do you know? Do you know I love you very much, Michael? <laughs> I like to say goodnight, because when I see the audience, I say, you know I love you very much. Even an inexperienced mimic knows all the ticks. Mmm, Bob Monkhouse here. Mm, I wish I didn't have to say that I, I like the early bit in my show where I skip around all over the place. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, that is exactly what Bob Monkhouse is known for. <laughs> and as for his Max Bygraves. Actually, don't worry about that. I'll do the number. I'll sing the song. Thank you, Don. Here we go. So I say good 
night, sweetheart. Sleep will banish sorrow. He does do a cracking John Cleese, though. Oh no, that's just his normal act. Try and come up with the greatest 80s end of the pier comic name imaginable. Too late, someone's beat you to it. My first guest this evening, a man with one long laugh. Please welcome Mickey Zaney. Lovely, lovely. How are you? 0 to 80 in three minutes. Not bad for Skoda. He's another one with a trolley of wigs. She showed me to the door. She went, door, this is Mickey. I said, I love the door. <laughs> she went, hee-haw, hee-haw, hee-haw. She said, would you like to play around? I said, well, you got some golf clubs. <laughs> Introducing Hal Nolan. Hello, holiday makers. There's a thing. Take the wife, please. Enjoy your holiday. Good night, you. And this very, very scouse comedian. Please welcome Greg Rogers. Thank you. Oh, you went down the social. The, the fella said, uh, "What was your last job?" My dad said, "A milk monitor." <laughs> Thanks very much. Good night. But there's big names too. Bowen. I love the Welsh. Have we, any, have we any Welsh people in? Dodd. My gracious Lord Mayor. Good gracious, Lenny Morris. <laughs> it's Michael's comedy we get the best look at. And with so much time to fill, he can't just tip handbags all over the floor, oh no. He's got to do actual stand-up with jokes and everything. Like this routine about Jersey, where the series is filmed. And, and the whole place has been completely taken over by Bergerac. You've got uh, Bergerac, Bergerac Truman, and even in the shops that are selling ham Bergeracs. Have you seen them? <laughs> Marvellous sense of humour. Look, there's two white, two men in white coats, and they're white, coming towards me. In another, he tackles the hot topic of dancing at weddings. And the uncle was always on the other side with the medallion on. Oh. <laughs> He's not quite got it. And the most embarrassing is the father. He's like a spider. <laughs> The whole quote-unquote act is like some kid dicking around on the playground. <laughs> look, there's Nutty. I wonder if he wants his car back. Hey, look, there's Cliff. Hiya, Cliff. Oh, my God, it's the wrong Cliff. Bye. I guess we should also tackle the step storyline. Every week continues this running joke where Michael's romantically obsessed with one of the stairs at the front of the stage. It doesn't make sense when you see it either. That's my favourite step, that. That's the most favourite step of all these steps. That's my favourite. In fact, I've fallen in love with that step. See that one there? I hate that one. I hate it. That step, which I used to love, has been having an affair with that one down there. No, just a little cuddle because I do like it. It's really nice. <laughs> and I'm going to propose marriage to it. At time of viewing, episode 6 was missing, but presumably he caps the joke by dropping his trousers and giving it one. OK, now it's time to shake the house down. Here's Shaking Stephen! Shaky dances like a dad kicking gravel off his driveway. Here's Rosemary! Rosemary. Most of the musical acts fall prey to the show's format, giving them a couple of minutes before Michael interrupts with, say, a funny dance. I hope you, uh, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but... As is only correct, the host gets plenty of his own numbers. I got those up, two, three, four, 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 I got those up, two, three
darling, would you? I can't describe a kiss in words of one syllable. No woman, no crime. Me tell you all the things that me don't I like to do, yeah. The only time he stops willying about is for the earnest big finish. Often stood like he's holding in a bum load of plops. And roses soon. Watching so much in a row gives you a feel of Michael's recurring themes, like his obsession with World War II. Apparently, we've discovered that in the theatre there is uh, an unexploded German bomb. You're not German, are you? <laughs> Verse brawl door TikTok, as you Germans like to say. We pointed it towards Europe, and the last we heard, we've retaken East Berlin, so it's quite the turn. <laughs> the war is over! and the inherent comedy of anything foreign. Uh, we're not getting anywhere. Are there any Italians in the audience? <laughs> Your pasta's ready. The speak in pseudo-foreign gibberish is a real go-to. You know the quoi la paqua, je m'en dis la apple towel, drop it off, bang it in. Le nutty de head on the convertible. Uh, he's saying how you must all come back to my place for a bit of slap and tickle, how's your father's? And play around fun, all right? Yeah, good idea. But what he's really known for is that crowd work, and Saturday Night Out runs us through the classics, dumping plants on people's laps, leading old ladies on stage to definitely not patronise them, all right, odd job. Do you want that? There we are. Well, this is the stairs. Up we go, Irene. Oh, so whereabouts you from, Irene? <laughs> Much had. <laughs> Much had on. Well, it's, it's, I wish I had, but there you are, love. And, and how's things at home? Everything at home all right, is it? Yes, thank you. That's lovely. Nice to see you. Enjoying yourself? Yes, thank you. There you go. Do you like knitting? Yes. Good night, Irene. This is all great, but what we've been missing so far is one of those big Barrymore moments. A Coolio or a Backstreet's Back. Then comes the end of episode 4, which goes full tent revival evangelism. I want you all to come down, come on down. Everybody stand up here. Everybody stand up. Oh yeah. Right, I want everybody to put your hands in the air. Everybody. What we gotta do, we gotta reach out and touch. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Oh, Make yeah. This world a better place if you can. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place. I don't believe it. My well bad knob ache's completely cured. We can change things if we start giving. Why don't you reach out and touch? Hey, there's a man touching himself down here. Praise the Lord, take this sinner away. Speaking of that, the in house dance troops' routines are a bit saucy. Wouldn't have fancied sitting next to me family on the sofa through one of these. You really go too far with your ooh -la -la. Oh no. Right. Chin in, chest out, Beffo. Second thoughts, do that the other way around. Frank Olivier. <laughs> 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 What's variety without magic? Would you please welcome Martin Daniels? Bet him and Roy Walker's son exchanged a knowing nod over the buffet table. Right, hi, welcome. What's your name? John. John. He likes his nose so much he's underlined, doesn't oh, he? Oh dear. Look, there was an inscription on the back here. To John, lots of love and kisses, Roger. Gay punchlines were so popular then. Even a pink handbag was easy laughs. Back in there. 
it's not my bag. <laughs> there. Stay where you are, Roger. More magic with Wayne Dobson, who you might remember from... No, I mean, from the telly. He had his own show. Somehow. Thank you and good evening. I'd like to firstly point out, and secondly, I would... <laughs> secondly, I would like to say this to you all. This. Nobakes back. <laughs> Tenthly, here's a joke for the dyslexics. Junbun bali gagaduda. I like you. I like you as well. <clears throat> You're a nice man, but I'm not a funny fella. Yeah, I've heard your act. The audience consisted of 3,000 midgets. Now I've got a stand innovation and didn't know a damn thing about it. Marvellous sense of humour. But there are treats hidden in these shows with some real mega powers team ups. I think Michael. What? Do you remember the first time we worked together? Yes, <laughs> who could ever forget? Where was it again? I've forgotten now. Showbiz. Where did all your money go, Bill? And this. Please welcome my first guest, the two marks. Here we are. In the green there is a young Mark Heap, off Spaced and Friday Night Dinner. I always confuse him being in the two marks with another double act doing the kids show rounds back then, Mr Heap and Mr Wall. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen. This kind of bickering jugglers act was popular in that era. I don't want it, stop it, stop it! Don't know if you've noticed, but some of the acts seem to have a black eye. All from the same episode. Barry Moore, Martin Daniels and Mickey Zaney looked like they copped one. Everyone but Sue Pollard. Was she dishing out right-handers backstage? Sue Wellard more like. For all the flack I'm giving him, there are still moments Michael can surprise a laugh out of you. Generally with the same gag where something's bigger than you'd expect. I'm putting on my top hat. Oh, baby, you took a chance. You won't believe what I've just done. And he's got a good voice. A great big beam came over you. And so far, there's not been too much that would get him cancelled if they stuck these on iPlayer. So the, oh, the, yeah, you stupid! There you go! He's just discovered that he's not a brother. I always had this nagging doubt. I somehow seen the odd one out. Even aside from that other stuff, just as a performer, people nowadays are fascinated with Michael Barrymore. Saturday Night Out demonstrates exactly why. 
forcing the fool Barrymore to display itself, exposing his quirks and repetitious oddness, having to empty out his armoury of comedy song and dance. And though we may mock, in the 1980s, there was nothing the British people loved more. Mino steals the scene, oh, stagger and sways, it's quite obscene, oh, he really knows how to dance. Oh, when he does a quick step down by the ocean, with a very sexy sideways motion, everybody gets to thinking of romance, from sunny Spain to San Jose. All the world is doing it, the Valentino way. Walking sideways across the floor. Everybody's doing the crab, so come on, let's go. You move to the right, then to the left, then you wiggle your toes. Turn around and sway back to back, with your hands on your hips. Once more to the side, back to the front, as you reach up and touch fingertips. 